Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY and today we're going to be replacing this old electrical panel with a brand new one. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is replacing this electrical panel and the reason being it has one huge issue with it and that is it doesn't have a main breaker. This isn't a sub panel, this is a main panel. So that means electricity is coming directly from the pole to the meter into the box. And what they did is they lugged their hot wires onto the bus bar. So there's no way to shut off electricity inside the box and safely work on it. You work inside this box, you're going to get electrocuted. It's super dangerous. It's super stupid the way they have it set up. So we need to fix this. Um, this is Square D's QOM. Uh, style panel box which means it's their commercial grade box so I went to my electrical supply store and I looked for just a main breaker the problem is it was hundred and eighty dollars just for the main breaker so I went to Home Depot and looked for Square D's home line panel and I could pick one up for hundred and twenty dollars it already comes with a main breaker panel for a 200 amp and it also comes with a couple uh, breakers with it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to swap out our boxes. Now I probably wouldn't do this is if this was my home box, right? If I had tons and tons of wires in here, um, I would have to rip everything out, redo that. I would probably just spend $180 for just the main breaker. Since this is in my garage, there's only two currently right now breakers that I have in use. So it's going to be super easy to just take off our hot lines, remove our um, two services that we have powering the garage, and just replace the box. So that's why we're going to go this way. Then I end up with a home line square D box. The breakers are going to be cheaper if I want to expand on it. Um, and I don't have to go and buy the QOM style breakers, which are probably about double the price. The first thing we need to do to actually do this is cut power to the box itself and we're going to head outside to do that. So what we're going to do outside is we're going to remove our meter and that basically just jumps the wires coming from the pull into our box. We pull that off. Now these are stuck on here really well so just pull down. So now with the meter off, the top lines are still hot. They're coming in from the pole, but there's a separation in between there. And this meter is what jumps that. So now there is no electricity going into our box at all. Now that we have the meter pulled off from outside, we can safely work in the box. All right, so the first thing that we can do is we can unhook these lines over here on the side. So we'll just loosen these screws, pull our lines out. Let me go ahead and remove our breakers. We can take our neutrals and grounds out of the bar. And then we can go ahead and take off our two main lines down to our bus bars. And our neutral coming in from the line. On top of our box here, we have a wire clamp um, and our knockout. We just need to loosen that so we can pull our wires up through. Our box has four hold downs, two up top, and then down on the bottom, two down right here. We're just going to um, zip these out just a little bit just so we can get the box off and then slide everything down. So our box is off, 
Um, what we can do now is we can get our other one set up to put right back on here. Okay, so here is our 200 amp box. Um, a couple quick things about this. It has our main breaker already installed on it. Um, and for these newer style boxes, you can see right up here, they have these plastic knockouts up here. Um, so we can just tap into those. It's Square D's quick grip thing. Uh, we don't need to take out these knockouts up here if we don't have to or we don't want to. Um, so what we're going to do is just uh, utilize these quick grip things. Uh, for mounting, we have our uh, single mounting hole here to initially get this in place. But on the sides here, there's one here and one down here. We have a flush mount because uh, we're going into a stud bay. We don't have to go through here and go through a sheathing into our outside wall and make a hole. We can just flush mount on the sides. Uh, we also need to take off our knockout on the bottom here. That is where our mains are coming in from the outside, so we'll knock that out. So we have this knockout, one, two, and then one, two on the other side, so four knockouts for our flush mount. And then we'll just utilize our quick grips on the top uh, to run our wire down into the box. So what we need is we need the bottom left knockout out. We need the entire thing. So we're just gonna pop the whole thing out for our three inch knockout. Okay, so there is our three inch knockout hole. Um, we can feed our main lines through here and get this box on the wall. Okay, so we are going to feed in our main lines into our box. I have a small little screw here that we're gonna put through our box in the main hold down. That's just gonna keep everything on the wall until we get our side flush mounts mounted up. Okay, so that tiny little screw will not go all the way through our sheathing. It's just here to hold it on until we get these side mounts in. Now that we have our box mounted to the wall, we can go ahead and take our hot lines and we get them installed onto our main breaker. So we're just gonna back out these lugs. We also have a neutral here in the center. And what we're going to do is, I have one line that is a little bit longer than the other. So we're gonna put the longer one over to the right side here, the shorter one here to the left side. And this is four gauge wire, so this stuff is so crazy hard to uh, work with, but uh, it carries your 200 amps. So we're gonna try and get this bent down in here, up along our panel and up down into this top lug. Now that we have our line bent to where we want it, before we put it into the lug, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some no-locks grease on this end here. And basically what that's gonna do is it's not gonna allow any corrosion to happen between the lug and the wire itself because it creates a whole bunch of um, stuff that you don't want, heat and transfer between here and moving around and all that stuff. So go ahead and schmutz this up with some no-locks. This stuff is kind of like your uh, dielectric grease that you use in automotive. It's just made for specifically for your panels. So once we got that on, get our line back where we need it to be. Put it into our main lug. We want our main line coming straight up and down. 
And we want it fully seated down into the main breaker. So we just want this nice and snugged up, nothing crazy. Then we can go ahead and push this wire back in where it needs to be. Okay, so we have it tucked into the back of our panel. This is one of those wires that you don't want to be working around or moving around. So as best you can, it's number four gauge. Get it tucked in to the back, run it up along the sides and out. Now we're going to do it to the opposite side. Now that we have our two main lines hooked up and lugged in and tightened down, what we can do is we can go ahead and take our neutral wire and go ahead and put that in the center here. Once our main lines are all tightened down and everything's good to go, we can go ahead and take our lines that we had here and go ahead and put them into our box. What's nice about this Square D box is it has a quick grip system in it. So there are these um, V-shaped channels up here on top. Um, just be careful which ones you put them in. Um, the smaller ones are made for 14 to 12 to wire. The wider ones are obviously your heavier gauges wire. So they need to go into their correct um, slots. So they have multiple tabs on them. All we're going to do is we're going to pop this first one out, twist it off. Okay, so all you need to do is just get a V crimp on your line and it just slides right back into place. Um, and it's just so nice. Um, it's nice and manageable. It's nice and clean. You don't got to worry about knockouts. Um, I really actually like this. It's pretty nice, especially with these new boxes. So all we need to do is put a cover over this, which is supplied. And that just slides right into place. So this bar just keeps all of your wires nicely tucked in here. There's no way for them to pop out. Um, that's the purpose of this bar here. So we can just go ahead and feed our wires down through to our breakers. So now we're ready to hook up our wiring. What we need is breakers. I have a 15 amp and a 20 amp breaker. So I have two different size wires coming into this box. I have a 14 2, which is going to go to our 15 amp. And then I have a 12 2, and that's going to go to our 20 amp breaker. So for these breakers, they're super simple. You'll notice that these breakers have a foot on them. And also on the back, they have a place for the slot. That slot goes into your bus bar panel right here. The foot clips into this plastic little bar right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put our 15 on top. Doesn't really matter which goes on top. Uh, the feet clip in, and you literally just push the breaker onto the bus bar like that. Super simple. There we go. So now we can just feed our wires down into the back here, make them nice and neat, and then feed into our breakers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring down our ground. We have them twisted together. There is no load on the ground wire, so they can share the same spot on the neutral bar. Place that in. And then snug that down. So there's our ground. So now what we can do is we can take our neutral wire and hook that right into our neutral bus bar. The only thing is with these neutrals, this is a load carrying wire. So you can only have one in each slot and it's not like the ground wire. So go ahead, put that in, snug it up, give it a little pull, make sure it's in tight. So we can take the neutral to our 12-2 wire down here also. <clears throat> Go ahead and snug that one up as well. Now what we can do is we can take our hot wire, stick it right down in here to this connection right here, and then just tighten it down. Give that a pull. Okay, so we have our connections into our breakers. We have our neutrals into our neutral bus bar, and we also have our grounds into there. 
All right, so now that everything is all buttoned up here, we got our box on, we got our main lines into um, our lugs, we got our neutral into the center. Uh, we have all of our wiring hooked back up to our two breakers that we have. Um, the only thing that we did not do is we did not bond or ground our box. That's going to be in a separate video. If you want to see that, go ahead and click up right here. Um, but for right now, uh, this is done. Um, it was pretty simple, ripping out the old uh, box and putting in this new one. I do like the newer features that the home line has, like the uh, quick grips. It makes it super simple. You just kind of slide those into place. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.